Hello and welcome. On another venture into the wonderful world on the bottom of our ponds, lakes and streams. Today I want to talk to you about an unseen army that's working tirelessly to keep our planet's freshwater ecosystems functioning. In particular, we will take a closer look at another one of the unsung heroes of nature, the freshwater isopod. You could say they are the tough cousins of the amphipods, which we looked at in a recent video. But while being fairly closely related, isopods have conquered a different niche in the web of life. Their name, isopod, means something like same-footed, translated from Greek. And it is referencing to the fact that all seven pairs of walking legs have a very similar shape, although the first pair is very small and used for feeding. In addition to that, isopods exhibit a typical crustacean morphology, including two pairs of antennae, as well as the so-called uropods, which are the branched limbs at the rear end of their body. Underneath the abdomen, we can see the rudder-like pleopods moving to accomplish water exchange at the respiratory organs. These features might be the most crucial for enabling them to exploit resources in places that are inaccessible to their competitors. Compared to the amphipods, isopods have a much better tolerance for poor water quality and low oxygen levels. That enables them to conquer a diverse range of aquatic habitats, from murky waterways to small ponds, and in some regions, they can even make a living on the biofilm growing inside the piping of our water supply. But let's step back and examine what role they play in our ecosystems. Freshwater environments around the globe receive an enormous amount of organic matter, especially in areas with seasonal changes where trees shed their leaves every year. This input of leaves creates an opportunity for life to flourish. When the trees shed them and they fall, like manna from heaven, a lot of them accumulate in slower flowing or standing bodies of water. Here, an abundance of small creatures is competing for the resources the leaves still contain. Bacteria and other microscopic life forms start to soften the dead tissue. Protozoans will colonize the surface to feed on the growing bacteria. This decomposing activity can lead to oxygen levels getting very low, but the isopods are adapted to these conditions. With their three pairs of mouthparts, they forage on decaying leaves, algae and biofilms, preventing them from overwhelming the ecosystem and making the contained nutrients available to animals higher up in the food chain. Their modest demand for nutrition and water quality enables them to perform this essential ecological function in even the most challenging environments. Their long antennae help them find nutrition and make sense of their environment, even in complete darkness. Like the amphipods, isopods evolved in the ocean and only comparatively few of them have colonized freshwater habitats. But they have been incredibly successful doing it, spreading to waters across the entire northern hemisphere. They are incredibly hardy, tolerant not only against polluted and oxygen-poor water, they are even able to survive being frozen. Fish and aquatic mammals like whales and seals might be the animals we associate with aquatic habitats, but crustaceans are the ones running these ecosystems. Similar to the amphipods, isopods have diversified into about 10,000 species, but there might be many more not yet known to science. And although they share a common ancestry with amphipods, they are more closely related to any other isopod, including terrestrial species like pill bugs and the giants living in the deep sea, which reach body lengths over 50 centimeters or 20 inches. These freshwater isopods here might only grow to about two centimeters in length, but they're still considered a keystone species for the ecosystems they live in, having a large effect on their environment relative to their biomass and they themselves are a haven for life, with sessile protists and micro-animals like rotifers attached as epibionts on the surface of their exoskeleton. 
We should pay more attention to creatures like this, much less known than the fish and birds they feed, but so much more important to nature, and in the end to us humans, than their humble size suggests. I, for one, salute these tiny marvels, silently shaping the aquatic world they live in, and yet demanding almost nothing in return. Thank you for watching.